Intuit customer interviews. Lucy Greco with QuickBooks Self-Employed. Search. Set up payments, checks by mail. So dismiss card button. Set up payments, checks by mail. So pass A. Accept payments for free. You've already set that up. Double tap yeah. that card if you want. Yeah, so I would, I, I, you know, if you've already set it up, it should have something that's saying you've done this or something. I think the philosophy is that the user has to... Give the user control, yeah. yeah. Dismiss card button. I mean, I still want the user to dismiss it, but it might be say, you know, you've got an account set up already. Yeah. Navigate up button. Invoices. Brandon Biggs explains screen readers to a room of engineers. <laughs> so what do you, what is, what does that do for you? I guess I'm having a hard time understanding the value in that for yourself. Um, what, being able to see the screen? No, the button noise that's coming at you from the screen. Oh, it's, it's, it's like, um, it's like uh, the, the visual screen, you know, why in the, I, I still haven't figured this one out yet. Why in the world do people like to flash lights in their eyes? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the exact same thing. Um, people are really weird. And so it's just, it's just, you know, people like to flash lights in their eyes and, and there's a big industry in flashing lights in people's eyes. And I haven't figured that one out yet. But um, once I do, I'll probably be rich. Um, but anyways, so um, so that's that's literally why I I mean that's the the where, where it's the only way that I can access the screen is by converting it into speech, um, or by braille. And um, and currently, uh, um, the the most advanced braille display is one line and uh, by by like eighty cells. And so um, and that's like a, a ten thousand dollar piece of technology. So, um, so the tactile modality has not had so much uh, innovation in the last uh, uh, forty years. So, um, so the 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 text of speech has had a whole lot more um, uh, time and, and love put into it. So, um, so expert screen reader users uh, use the um, synthesized speech and not human sounding speech um, because. Uh, when 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 you get to you, you know use it twelve hours a day, you get really fed up with the speed of the the slow um, speech. You just want to get the page read, um, and so you speed it up, and um, and that's how you can read you know five hundred fifty words a minute as your relaxed speed. JJ Meta, do you use QBO on the web or on mobile? Um. I use web, but mostly because I'm used to using things on the web. It has nothing to do with the accessibility of one or the other. I know the Android app is quite accessible, and I play with it here and there. But I'm primarily a keyboard user, along with my screen reader. So I'm just used to using desktop tools, perhaps out of what I'm used to over you know being a computer user for 25, 30 years, and you know it's a little bit of stubbornness to move everything to mobile. But I'm certainly excited about the possibilities of mobile and that what it presents. But obviously. Doing everything with the touch screen sometimes can be a little less efficient than doing things with a keyboard where you can quickly type in things. Charles Hopkins on Business Growth. If you're able, better able to manage your expenses and understanding your business, what are your goals for two years? Do you want to expand to a new location? Oh, absolutely. You, I want to see my business grow. Okay. I want to see my business grow 50% within two years. Oh, that's, a, that's a great goal. I, I think it can happen. I have one of the best dedicated employees ever that I've ever found and that is Lisa and I really think she can teach me a lot it, just by working together we'll make it grow we'll have it it will happen um, I can help her in certain at certain points and she can help me in certain points and that's excellent I think we can make it grow Kyle Tyson on technology for efficiency to, in order to expand, in order to become it, going into a private, what do you think you'll need in order to move further? Well, to do that, I think, especially with a lot of machines, I need credit card readers on all the machines. And I think a big thing that will help me is telemetry. Because for me, uh, I only have, I have four places right now, but I only have storage rooms in three of the four places. So... Sometimes I have to bring things on the subway, and you know, it's a big old suitcase. Uh, it breaks down over time. I always have to buy one every couple of years because <laughs> you know, the sidewalks, the streets of New York is you know, it's brutal sometimes. But uh, it'll be nice to know exactly what I have to bring uh, instead of just going there 
and going back and forth yeah. and wasting time. The telemetry and, and the credit card readers, especially with if I have more machines, I want to carry less money. Right. That, that would definitely help. But So credit card and telemetry are the two biggest things. Jim Lockwood on color contrast. And on this page, find the element that says past due. Right here. It's a little okay. hard. It's a, it's see, it, it's not black. And then the next one is transactions and it's lighter. And then past due is very light. Not, not very light, but lighter. And uh, I saw it because of its position. It's kind of like in, it's not jammed off to one side or the other. So I would say it was okay, but if it's important, which I would think it was important if you had a bill that come up and it was past due, you would want it to pop out a little more, but uh, maybe it's not uh, meant to tell you that it's past due, that it's just something that could light up. Brandon Biggs on QBO There's an unlabeled box here without even a hint, which says the date, and the date on here is today's date. I'm gonna hit tab. Enter text edit. All right, so because I know QuickBooks, um, I can guess this might be an account or something like that. So I'm gonna, hit, but I'm gonna hit Nvidia plus space and look above it and see if there's anything. All right, payment method. All right, but if I hit down arrow, it says reference number. So um, that it, that's not cool. Um, Russ and Melody Stein on customer support. Well, actually, in terms of using QuickBooks, uh, my big challenge is connecting to customer service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, I get different responses. I'm sure you understand that, you know, every individual human is going to say something different, so you get a bunch of different views on things. If I go to the online, you know, we're on a chat support system. Sometimes it's great, but then sometimes it's not. So then I call, and when I call, I have to go through a video relay service. You know, it's just like using the interpreters who are sitting here now, except instead they're in a call center on a screen. It's a it's like that concept. So it's just, you know, communicating by phone through an interpreter that way. So that's a challenge. Of course, I always prefer, you know, that you would consider hiring a deaf person who specializes in quick within the company so that any deaf person that has a company can make a video call directly to that deaf specialist in the company. And then we've got face-to-face -face communication. We can ask our questions in sign language, which is my native language. I'd much rather do that than kind of relying on an interpreter and wondering if the interpreter's getting it right or not. I mean, not to, to slur interpreters, but you know, it's only natural that an interpreter who's unfamiliar with me, even a good one, might not exactly be able to read my mind and what I'm trying to say, you know, and they're attempting to translate the best they can, and it's already a complicated issue, and trying to, to, to translate into the language that you're trying to, un mm -hmm. that you use technically in the company, so of course something's going to get lost in the translation. And there are more and more deaf business owners out there who I'm sure are using the software, so why not, you know, go ahead and hire someone who is deaf, fluent in sign language, who we can communicate with directly and get our problems taken care of. I mean, you know, that way we're getting it straight from the horse's mouth instead of through a third party. Yeah, he's making a really good point. I, I have another friend who owns an interpreter agency, actually, and uh, that person just emailed me this morning, actually, saying, uh, I need help with QuickBooks, too. <laughs> he's really kind of frustrated. Um, so, because I mentioned that I was going to be meeting with you guys, so he asked me to pass this along, you know, that he's not really uh, well-versed in QuickBooks, uh, you know, that's why we have a professional who helps us, so, again, would you uh, consider even making a tutorial in sign language, mm -hmm. American Sign Language, um, so that, and we prefer that a deaf person be the person on screen making that uh, a translation, don't hire a hearing interpreter to do that, hire a deaf person would be on screen uh, providing that information. Uh, that would really benefit us deaf uh, business owners, for sure. Okay. All right. How's that? I think we did pretty good. I think you did very good. No punishing for you today. 